This week, you're going to notice I have a ton of things to talk about, but I have no Zimmel. And that's because, you know, duty calls and the Texas State sports press. I don't know when he started to give that term up, but, you know, that's what he called himself in college. He got called off to uh, do something at his radio station. He told me, I guess the equipment started breaking and, you know, send in the Marines, send in Andrew Zimmel. So that's what happened today. Luckily, though, um, we, we were kind of having a debate as to what we were going to have on the pod. We I do kind of like a weekly, you know, hey, this is our rundown for the week. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about, uh, kind of just based off what we're seeing online and, you know, what we think you all need on our podcast. Um, but I got some records back and that's going to be kind of what we're going to talk about. And also Coach Z making history coming up. Episode six. Tired of winning the tailgate, but losing the games? We can't help that. But we can tell you what the hell is up with each team and what's going on across sunny San Marcos. Texas State fans, get on your feet. You're listening to Squaring Around with Jacob Rodriguez and Andrew Zimmel. Oh, before I get started with all that, I want to uh, just bring it to y'all's attention. I'm sure y'all seen it online. Um, we also do have our own Twitter now, at Square and Pod. Shout out to, uh, you know, all my marketing friends that were giving me shit and said that I should definitely do something better than my own professional Twitter, even though I am verified. I know it's post Elon Musk Twitter, so it doesn't carry the same weight as it did, but I am a blue check journalist. So, hey, um, but yeah, at Square and Pod. We're online. Uh, we have a new logo for the podcast that's on everything. Um, we I also just updated our distribution. It was way easier than I thought. So we're on Apple Podcasts. Uh, of course, we're on Anchor and Spotify. I will say, though, that this podcast is meant to be watched instead of like just straight listening to because that's what I'm editing to. Is I'm just editing to the video that we're producing right now. And in a case like today, uh, I, I guess the audio is going to be pretty much exactly the same as the video, unless I'm pulling up tweets and stuff like that. Um, but I'm editing to that. So that's kind of the difference there. Um, so yeah, we're on YouTube and Spotify for the video version. Everything else is, uh, you know, audio only. So Spotify, Anchor, what else have I said? That's it. I mean, you can listen to it straight up on uh, Spotify too, but don't be weird. Watch the video. Um, <laughs> cool. So the first thing I want to talk about is I requested open records requests from Texas State. Um, feels like forever ago. It was because of the holiday break and things like that. Um, but they finally got back to me. I asked for a comprehensive list of all of the athletic coaches um, contracts. So, you know, these are multi hundred thousand dollar contracts for most of these people. Um I'll break down a lot of that today, but you know, of course, we're talking about football because um, I wanted GJ's contract, and I, I just wanted to see it. I, I had kind of known that it's basically the same as Spavs, with a couple of caveats to that. The first, and of course, at, at Square and Pod at, on Twitter, we have all of this uh, in a thread, so you can give us a follow, check it all out for yourself. But um, you know, he's getting eight hundred thousand dollars off the top every year. And he gets a car allowance, five fifty, uh, and a cell phone allowance, fifty bucks. I think that's kind of funny. And uh, he also has twelve athletic performance incentives. So this is, you know, if the team does such and such, if he is recognized in this way, if the team is recognized in this way, uh, and the performance, you know, indicates that he gets a certain dollar amount to that. So just rattling these off. Sunbelt Conference Championship appearance, that's $25,000 added on to that $800,000. A Sunbelt Conference Championship, like if you win that game, you get $50,000. A bowl game appearance, you get $25,000. A bowl game win, $50,000. Uh, if you're in you know, those big bowl games, those New Year's Six bowl game appearances, $50,000. If you win a CFP semifinal game appearance, $100,000. CFP Championship appearance two hundred thousand dollars a cfp national championship win three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to our boy gj kenny and a win over a cfp top 25 opponent 
uh, he's going to get $5,000 every single win in, in that category. So, you know, we're playing the Roadrunners, if we're playing Marshall, if we're playing whoever's playing good, um, and they're ranked in the top 25 college football pool, we're getting $5,000 every time we knock a team off like that. Um, pretty cool. Uh, if we finish in the top 25, this is the next one, he's going to get $25,000. If he wins conference coach of the year, he's going to get $10,000. National coach of the year, he's going to get $50,000. And he has a similar academic performance incentives as some of his predecessors. And I'll talk about that now too. Uh, uh, quick shout out to Molly Cost from the Texas State University system. She's the general counsel for the system. So I've worked with her a long uh, a lot, you know, just getting records and stuff back and forth um, at the University Star, where I was the editor in chief, sports editor. Uh, so she knows me very well. Um, and I kind of messed up when I sent this because I sent this after my birthday. This was December 13th, was the date of the request um, when I was asking for all these things. I also realized that I messed up and I requested Stephen Trout's contract, even though I had already gotten that after he had signed his new deal this past summer, um, you know, after the regionals. And, you know, just great baseball from Texas State. So obviously you could tell I, I definitely have a favorite team here. Uh, and it's definitely Stephen Trout. So Stephen Trout, holler. Um, but yeah, so I ended up emailing her this morning and being like, hey, uh, you don't have to send me Trouts. Um, you know, you can send me the rest. But I was also wanting uh, Dennis Franchoni's last contract, longtime head coach of the Bobcats, Everett Withers' last contract, which was his first contract at Texas State and Jake Spavadol's contract. Um, so I got all those three because I had requested all those three originally. I don't know what I did with it. Some Between changing desks at the star and becoming a professional journalist, who knows what happened. Uh, anyway, I got all that stuff back. So I have a thread on that also at Square and Pod on Twitter. Uh, so Jake Spavadol was getting $800,000 a year. He had the same car and phone allowance as GJ. Uh, and if the Bobcats went bowling, so any bowl game, doesn't matter, Cure Bowl, um, Fiesta Bowl, you know, whatever, uh, Hydro Flask Bowl, there's so many bowls now, it's hard to keep track of, but whatever, regardless, if we went bowling, period, he was going to get one month of salary. So, uh, you know, $800,000 split up across 12 months, you divide that by 12, you're going to get $66,666.667. Uh, and that's what he would have gotten if he had achieved that. We all know now he did not. Um, but kind of odd that he went that route instead of a performance like GJ. Maybe he wanted it and maybe didn't get it. I don't know. Um, but in the exact same um, academic performance options as GJ's deal, you know, and moving expenses. That's what he wanted because he was coming from West Virginia. Uh, Ever Withers, uh, we have a like a progressive deal. So year one, he was going to make six fifty. Uh, year two, he's going to make 675. Year three, 700. Uh, year four, 725. Year five, 750. Um, and he got a car and a cell phone allowance. That didn't change really with those numbers. Um, and he did have an athletic performance incentive. So that's a bowl game incentive. Um, and that would have been, you know, if he, his last year, he was to make 675. So he, what is that, like $40,000 or something like that? I haven't done the math, uh, but that's what he would have gotten. And the exact same academic, you know, performances. So if the the team had a greater than nine sixty or nine seventy, you know, cumulative, uh, whatever performance on their whatever they're tracking, he gets a certain rate based on how good it actually is. So it goes from seven thousand all the way to twelve thousand. So kind of cool for something he really can't control either, just other than being on people to you know go to class and stuff. But that's also what every other coach, as I'm going to talk about right now, also got. Dennis Franchione's was honestly the most interesting, uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, he was making $400,000 a year. This was in 2014 uh, when he came back to Texas State, uh, and he had three incentives. So a non-BCS bowl game appearance is $25,000. A BCS bowl game appearance was $100,000, and an outright conference championship uh, win was $20,000. And then he had those same uh, academic incentives at GJ. Spav and Withers all had so nothing has changed at Texas State from the academic incentives um, from 2014 to 2023. Now, we should note right at the bottom the other financial considerations. We should also note, I, I write this on Twitter. The contract says that Texas State was paying for Fran's country club dues back then too, 
It says it was paid using money from the touchdown team. I'm assuming that's just the booster club and approved by then athletic director, Larry Tice. Of course, you know, I can see all the signatures and stuff. So this isn't, you know, something that was refuted by the school or anything. This happened, at least that's what the contract says. Uh, if something else happened behind the scenes, it's not documented. Um, and then that initial fee for that had to be donated. I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, kind of cool little contract dump. Uh, I was proud of myself for getting all that. And I had to remind Texas State, because we're coming back from the holidays and stuff, so I'm sure they were just inundated with requests and stuff, not just by me, uh, other journalists from the Star, you know, KTSW, you know. There's been a lot of uh, Texas Tribune stuff is very interested in Texas State's everything with uh, what's going on uh, with that clear alert training that the police are getting to. So I'm sure they've had a bunch of requests from journalists that they've had to just dole out today. Um, I did think I should get it faster, though, because, come on, uh, how hard is it to get a contract for this? And then just, just you know, get rid of it. I will say, too, my last thing about contracts before I start talking about uh, Coach Z etching her name into history is that GJ's looks distinctly different from everybody else's. You know, he's got like kind of like branded uh, lettering and stuff on the legal document, which I thought was cool because we've never seen that uh, at Texas State. I've looked at uh, hundreds of contracts, not just for coaches, but also professors and, uh, you know, just general, general service contracts and stuff like that that you guys definitely don't care about. Uh, but it definitely looks way different than any other contract. So I think that's cool because, like, we're, you know, we're talking about the brand continuing to build on itself. You need things like that. You need to stand out and you need to, you know, have little bobcats everywhere. Uh, I think it was a nice touch. So shout out Texas State. Um, uh, we will have a podcast on how that deal is getting done. That's a super tease. I don't know when it's going to get done, but uh, it's in the works right now. So thank you for everybody from Texas State that's been helping me, you know, get my boat rowing in that right direction. Cool. So something else happened today. Let me pull up my notes here. Texas State women's basketball team was playing in front of a super big crowd today for their uh, – there's San Marcos Field Day. I, I got to go back to what the team actually calls it in their stuff. Um, they're calling the, or they had called this the SMCISD Field Day trip. That's on the game notes itself. Very fun trip. Uh, obviously, I think any Texas State team plays better when the community is involved because you really get that kind of like cultural aspect of like, oh, this is what San Marcos is. It's just a great place. Obviously, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here because I'm talking to a bunch of alums and uh, supporters of Texas State Athletics. I don't have to tell you how beautiful Texas State is and how great the people are there, um, but I am. And so they ended up beating Georgia State, and this was the win that got uh, Coach Z to 175 uh, on her total wins. And so, you know, she's uh, she surpassed Susan Fox, longtime coach for the Bobcats, and now she's the program's all-time winningest head coach. She's in her 12th year, and, uh, you know, she was talking in the press conference, and shout out Colton McWilliams, who's basically having his, a, a podcast of his own inside all these press conferences as the, the guy who goes to all of these games and is doing a bunch of stuff for the Bobcats uh, for the San Marcos Daily Record. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, really cool atmosphere. Uh, she was super kind of like Mamba mentality, Kobe Bryant, you know, like job's not finished. I'm not going to celebrate this until the end of the season when I've, you know, had time to reflect. I, I honestly haven't had any time to reflect on it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was a bit of a tyrant saying, don't talk about it. I don't want to even talk about it at all. I want to focus on beating Lafayette. And then we got to this game and everybody was completely quiet, which I appreciated because my focus truly has been um, finding a way to beat Georgia State, as it will Arkansas State. I think time to reflect will come at the end of the season because of when this falls. But I'm 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 humbled, like I said. Also, she's still going to win a bunch of games. I mean, they're going to play Arkansas State, ULM, and South Alabama. They should win all of those very convincingly. I'm not worried about anything. I am afraid of Old Dominion, not just for women's basketball, but just kind of like Texas State in the Sun Belt, Sun Belt, um, you know, as a whole. I think that's just kind of a team that's kind of like, hey, we want your, we want what you guys got. So they play us hard in everything that we do. And, you know, I, I could see them kind of getting scrappy down there in Norfolk, Virginia. So, yeah, they're going to beat the brakes off of Arkansas State, ULM, and South Alabama. Though South Alabama two years ago did knock them out of the tourney. So, yeah, there's that. 
So congratulations, Coach Z. Super awesome. She also has a bite talking about uh, that she wants to stay at Texas State. She wants to win at Texas State. Continuing, she loves Texas State. I love being a Bobcat. Um, I love the opportunity for me as a woman of color as well to be able to lead these young women. Um, there's a lot of positives, but again, I'm not in reflection mode. I'm really right now wanting to wrap it up with y'all, go celebrate with them, and I now to get myself ready for Arkansas State uh, because they're just, you know, as excited as they are to win a championship, I've been excited this entire year preparing to help them uh, achieve that because as a former student athlete, there's nothing like winning a championship. It's fun to go to the NCAA. It's fun to go to the WNIT, but there's nothing like saying you're a champion and, and you know, for those four to come back and the additional two that joined the class, and as hard as I'm pushing our coaching staff and our support staff, um, that's truly where my mind is right now. Uh, you know, to me, person who loves Texas State, an alum, uh, university star, great, <laughs> I'll say it. Uh, you know, that just fired me up. So uh, I love hearing people talk about the university, as do you guys too. You know, we hate bad news. So this is great news, not just for her, but for the university and the program as a whole. Flipping the script here, the men's team is tipping off in Jonesboro tonight, facing off against Arkansas State and ULM. This is the last kind of string of games where I thought the men's team were going to win convincingly and bounce back. They actually shut me up last week, and I, I put the score in last week when I was editing the podcast. They won against James Madison and Alonzo Sule, uh, 63 to 62. So great for them. Uh, shut up, Jacob. What the hell do you know about sports? Uh, South Alabama, uh, after the Jonesboro game, or I'm so dumb. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. I was flipping all over through tabs, and that's what happens, kids. I mean, you stay in school, you know? Anyway, whatever. Uh, they beat JMU. They beat South Alabama. They're going to beat up Arkansas State and ULM, and then they're going to face a very tough uh, Marshall game. But luckily, that's when they come home, and that's... Uh, no, that's not the Jeff Foster court dedication, uh, but it's the game before, and they're having a whiteout jersey giveaway. That's kind of fun. I might make my way into town. Oh, it's a Thursday, though. Ooh, uh, I might just go for that Jeff Foster one. Yeah. But yeah, they should win convincingly. I'm not really afraid of anybody except Marshall. And uh, Georgia Southern also very plays us very close. A lot of people are kind of like writing this team off, like ready to call in the towel. Uh, you know what happens when you have uh, players who are freshmen and sophomores and you know junior transfers who maybe didn't play so much at their other school? You're going to lose games because they don't have a lot of game experience. So nah, I'm not really writing this team off. Uh, I also you know, kind of share Zimmel's belief that really the only thing that matters is the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. And TJ has proven time and time again why he's worth $400,000 of his own. So uh yeah that's a separate podcast in itself but yeah men team doing good uh they're gonna beat up arkansas state tonight and i won't even wait up for the score honestly um yeah last thing i want to talk about is you know we've talked a lot about player safety in the wake of everything that happened on monday night football what is it now two weeks ago with damar hamlin obviously a super scary thing that that happened on the field and it kind of woke a lot of people up like, oh, my gosh, this is like, uh, you know, life or death in some cases. And something uh, that may look like a routine hit can actually mean a lot more. And that's kind of brought like player safety and stuff to the forefront again. Um, it, it happened again on the college level, though. And that was scary because that happened with Old Dominion, actually. Um, let me go flip down to my stuff. The team statement right here. So. Old Dominion says that their player, uh, Emo Essen, uh, was evaluated after he collapsed onto the field. And yeah, training staff took him in along with uh, Georgia Southern medical staff. Uh, but he was responsive throughout the night and he was able to sit with the team for the duration of the game afterwards. He drove home with the team. Uh, you know, obviously they're looking into exactly what happened. Uh, he's in good spirits and will work off with, you know, with ODU sports medicine staff to, you know, get back to normal and just kind of figure out what happens with that. Because anytime something like that happens immediately, your confidence is like, what? I'm an elite athlete and something like this happens to me. Um, but I'm, I'm just kind of glad that, you know, the Sun Belt, uh, not only a Sun Belt, but uh, so many people kind of like have highlighted this issue through DeMar's uh, case 
and seeing stuff like this and go, oh my gosh, like, no, we need to figure out what's going on. Like immediately the game doesn't matter. Uh, player health comes first. And uh, if you're a fan of sports, I think that's the kind of approach you have to take because, um, you know, we don't have sports without these guys. So uh, that comes first and foremost always. And at the end of the day, these are people with lives and families and people who care about them. Um, so yeah, it puts all that into perspective when you lose a game or you, you don't win a game or it's down to the wire. You need this one guy to do this one thing. And then maybe you got a shot at destiny. Um, at the end of the day, it's just life, man. So yeah, don't want to leave you off on kind of that depressing note. Um, but I think that's kind of uplifting too. So yeah. Andy, we miss you, buddy. <laughs> We're going to talk about recruiting. We're going to talk about uh, basketball because we'll have those scores and, you know, we'll have the weekend games too. Uh, and a lot more. Squaring around, episode six. Peace. Thanks for listening. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow the boys on Twitter. Eat them up. Eat them up. Eat them up.